this company seriously did their research before they started making folding knives. Hello everybody, Mannix here. Got a very exciting knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to support me on Patreon, link in the description. Subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you want to watch any other knife reviews, gear videos, etc. This knife kicks ass. And it's not just one knife, it's a whole variety of knives. These come in different sizes, different blade shapes, different colors, different blade steels even. But this one in particular I'm showing you is the large Tonto. Right there. I love the presentation, I love this style box. By the way, a little magnetic flip open box reminds me of what Boker does in some of their knives. Comes with a little tool just like the Boker S2 did when I got that back in the day, really cool. Pivot screw, body screw, little wrench right here, sweet. Been carrying this, been using this knife all the time, absolutely loving every second of it. Honey Badger, this knife company, I don't know a whole lot about them, but again, they really knew what they were doing when they put these knives out for us. They're extremely, extremely effective. They're very cost efficient. I can't think of anything they're missing, pretty much. They nailed everything. They nailed everything we have been talking about in the knife videos on the knife forums for years and years. It's like they took everything we said, everything we loved, they threw it all in a blender, and then out came this, the Honey Badger series. Not just this one in particular. Again, the whole this is a whole series of knives they made, but all the Honey Badgers are outstanding. Home runs. Ditched everything we said we didn't like in knives, and they added in everything we said we did want in knives. The people have spoken. Honey Badger was like, here you go. That's what I really like about this knife, this knife series anyway. This is the only one I currently have, but I've really looked through quite a few others, and they're all pretty fantastic. It's going to be up to your preference. Let's get the specs out of the way for this one. 8CR13 MOV blade steel on this guy right here. FRN handle with skeletonized stainless steel liners in there, as you can see. Blade length is 3.6 inches. Handle length is 4.6 inches, making the overall length 8.2 inches. So it would qualify as a large, medium large size folder. Weighs 3.9 ounces, and I think my scale said 3.91 or something, so it's close enough. It's just a sub 4 ounce knife. 47 bucks is what it says on, currently on their website as of late 2022. I don't know if that is the retail price. I don't know if that's the sale price, but that's about what you'll get this for. It's like mid $40 range, so not too bad at all. It's a sub $50 knife. You get a lot of knife for your money. Now, on top of that, this one happens to be the Tonto, the large orange in the HDR 13 MOV. Most of their knives also come in D2. You'll spend, I think, another 15, maybe 20 bucks. I don't remember the number offhand. I think they, for the large D2s, they'll charge maybe around $62 or something. This one happens to be the cheaper variant. Again, 8CR13 MOV instead of D2. Save about 15, 20 bucks or so. Also comes in a medium and a small size. They each drop about $4 in price. It kind of depends on the blade shape and the color. The, the prices vary a little bit, but that's about what you can expect. You'll pay a little bit less for the smaller size. Not much less, but a little less. You want to save a little bit of money? Cool. Comes in, I think, six different blade shapes. Let's see, this is the Tonto right here. Also comes in what they call the Warren Cleaver, the Claw, the Drop Point, the Leaf, and the Hook. That's pretty sweet. So you have a variety of different blade shapes to pick from. Some are extreme, some are a little bit more versatile, like this Tonto and like the drop point. They're going to be more versatile, more useful overall, but if you have a specific use for any of those other blade shapes, then there you go. Happens to be orange right here. It also comes in the blue, the black, of course. I think a dark green or an OD green, and then I think a coyote brown or a desert tan. They're all awesome colors. Love them. But of course, I am an orange guy. I like the orange, the very fluorescent color. The blue one's the only other fluorescent color they have, I would say. The others are more kind of subdued looking, a little bit more tamed, but also very awesome. It's on a ball bearing track. Yep, check that out. You can't really see it in there, not with this camera anyway, not without it being taken apart, but no wrist movement needed whatsoever. Flicks out every single time with the flipper right there, as well as with the thumb hole. You can open it conventionally, you can flick it open. The hole is a little bit rounded right there, and it's kind of like a half circle shape. It's not quite a circle. I would have preferred a circle, but whatever. And it is, as you can see, the edges are a little bit rounded. So it's not a sharp edge, like coming down at 90 degrees, like you'd see on the spider Spydercos. Uh, but you could argue it's a little bit more comfortable to open up. It's less sharp on your thumb tip right there. So, cool. Kind of a honeycomb-like pattern. A bunch of hexagons on here works very well. It's textured enough. I like it. A little backspacer down here. It's got some texturing on it as well. It's useless. It doesn't do anything, but it looks cool. So aesthetically, that's pretty awesome. little lanyard hole right there. Tip up... 
carry skeletonized pocket clip. Looks like it's got a little stonewash finish on there. Loop over tip up skeletonized pocket clip. Yes, the people have spoken. Everyone going nuts over those loop over pocket clips. I don't really care that much, but you know what? I do see the advantage to them. They're more covert, so cool. And this actually extracts out of the pocket very easily. Some loop over clips I have had some issues with in the past. This one I have not executed perfectly. And yes, it is swappable to the left side right there, as you can see. So it is completely ambidextrous. It is a liner lock, which you could argue is sort of ambidextrous, but not really. It, it, it works if you're a lefty. I'm not a lefty, so my hands are kind of goofy right here. But it still works. You can still kind of close the knife that way. You have to get a little bit used to it. Pulling the liner to the left and then closing the blade instead of pushing it and then closing the blade. Not a big deal, though. It's still... I'm going to call this an ambidextrous folder. Jimping on the FRN handle spine right there, which is extremely functional, actually. Who would have thought... It's very fine, very sharp, works very well. Same with the spine of the blade right here. It's also jimped, works very well. The flipper is jimped, so if you want to use it, I don't think it does anything as a guard as far as the jimping is concerned, but it sure does for the flipper. Right there just helps catch your finger right there. The cutting edge is very cleanly added right there instead of it sort of melding into the unsharpened portion of the blade. It's a relatively clean cut right there, so you can see exactly where the edge starts. On some of these blade shapes, they do have a separate choil right here, which is also jimped. Thank you very much. So you get a little bit less cutting edge, but you have an extra choil and you can choke up right there if you want more control, a little bit more versatility. This Tonto in particular does not, but the advantage is you have more cutting edge right there. So it just depends on what you're going for. Very clean blade right here, by the way. Simple satin finish, but it just says 8CR13 MOV, nothing else on that side. And then on this side, we have just the Honey Badger logo, which is very classy looking. I like that. I like the little logo. No other text. You know, sometimes you get just a giant mess of like a whole paragraph, a whole book is written on the blade right there. This is a lot more simple, just more sexy looking. I think that's cool. It gets right to the point. It's a Honey Badger, and that's the blade steel. Cool. It's comfortable. It's a very simple handle, but it fits the human hand very well. The way it cants, the way the cutouts are, the way it curves around. We have a little dip right here for your thumb. It's comfortable. Very comfortable. It's not super ergonomic or super crazy choily or anything, but it's very versatile and comfortable at the same time. You can hold it in many different positions. It'll work just fine for that. So no issues about the handle right there. Again, it's, it's kind of a medium weight. I would say medium lightweight, just under four ounces. Some people don't like getting knives that are over 3.5. Eh, you're missing out. That's the case. But you could always dip down to like the smaller honey badgers if you really want the knife, but you don't want it to be too heavy. You can get the small one, maybe even the medium one. I don't remember what their weights are offhand, but you'll get closer to the three ounce range with those. So it's just below four ounces. Again, aggressively skeletonized, flush mounted stainless steel liners. Everyone's been going nuts over those too. Everybody's saying they want their liners to be skeletonized, need my knife to be as lightweight as possible. Everybody wanting the loop over clips. They don't want the pot clip too low. They want it as high as possible. So it's as covert as possible. Tip up, carry. Everybody wants tip up, tip up, tip up, tip up. That knife's awesome. Oh, but it's tipped out. Nope, sorry, not going to get it. Yeah, I've heard that many, many times over the last decade in all the knife reviews and all of the knife posts on the forums, etc. So Honey Badger read all that, they listened to all of us whining and complaining, and they did this. They threw on a tip-up loop over ambidextrous apocalypse swappable. Thank you, Honey Badger, for listening to us and doing what we wanted. That is so cool, and it works very well. It looks good, very simple, just awesome. I have no complaints about it. It's completely functional. It's not goofy or weird or too weak or too stubby or too long. It's just perfect. Nailed it. So it's comfortable. I like the way it looks. You know, it's not like super beautiful or anything. It's a user. It's not really a collectible, I don't think. It's it's more on the affordable side. It's got in that like Spetterco tenacious range, you know, the kind of everything can do whatever you want with knife. Not too expensive. Don't have to worry about it getting damn it dinged up or scratched or anything like that because it's you're not spending 150, 200, 300 bucks on it or anything. Uh, but it absolutely is useful. The heat treatment on the blade's great. It works pretty much just like every other 8CR13 MOV blade I've had. Gets razor sharp, won't hold an edge forever, but for the money, that's about all you can expect. If you want something better, you can upgrade to the D2 variant that they sell. Damn, they really did a great job. Ball bearings, again, super fast blade on there. It's got a flipper and it's got a thumb hole, so if you want either one, you have both. Cool, why not? Lockup is fantastic. No up and down. No side to side. I crank this down pretty hard too. And again, because it's on ball bearings, you can kind of go nuts with the pivot screw. You can crank it down pretty tough without it getting too tight on you because it's on ball bearings. And that's awesome. Every knife should have that by now. 
2022. I think, anyway. Some people may argue against that, but I, I love them. Super smooth. Faster, smoother than any other kind of washer combination you can get in my book. Not assisted, completely manual. So let's just recap everything they got right about it. It's just, it's, it's an 11 out of 10. It couldn't be improved anymore from what I understand. I can't think of anything obvious it needs or any problems with it. Again, great pod clip. It is ambidextrous. We got those boxes ticked. All the boxes, everything we want in knives is ticked on this knife right here. It's textured. FRN. Some people might want a G10. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool if they made a G10 Honey Badger. I don't think there is one right now. That'd be kind of cool, but it would feel a little bit more sturdy, a little bit stronger, kind of feel higher quality, even though it's typically not going to be that much stronger. It's not that big of a deal. It'll just feel like a higher quality knife. And that's still kind of cool for collectible and fondling purposes, but either way, it would be heavier though, and this is pretty much as light as they could possibly get this thing. If you get rid of those steel liners, it'll flex even more. It flexes a little bit if you really try to pinch it together. Some people might be bothered by that. I'm not, because I'm not doing this with my knife. I just do this. We got a thumb hole that's rounded, and we got a flipper, which is jimped. We have jimping on the spine of the handle. We have jimping on the spine of the blade. I like the handle shape. It's good looking overall. I like the texturing on here. So it's not too slippery, but it's not super aggressive. It's not going to rip up your pocket or anything when you're trying to extract it in and out of there. We have the lanyard hole, of course. Little backspacer right there. Again, they couldn't have probably made it any lighter with what they did with the materials. I like the finish. It's fine scent. It would be cool to get a stone wash, but it is what it is. Maybe they can offer blackened blades later. And on top of that, we have three different sizes. A large, we have a medium, we have a small. We have six different blade shapes, two different blade steels, five different colors. Damn, there's a whole plethora. It's a whole giant variety of knives. You'll probably find one that you like, one size, one blade shape, one color that you do like, and throw them all together and you'll have your favorite. This one's probably my favorite right here of all the ones I look through. Might get a couple more over time. Who knows? It's just, it truly is the everything EDC knife. It's affordable, and again, you can step up to the D2 if you want to spend a little more and get a little more for your money. It, again, it, it's like they've been watching all of our videos and all of our posts and all of our criteria. Just every box is ticked. It, it's it's just such a cool knife. And then, of course, you get a cool-ass box with it, too, with the little tool in there. It truly is an everything knife. If you don't know where else to look, if you're kind of new to knives, maybe you only want one or two knives, you don't really care if you're getting a collection, you just want something that's affordable, you want something that's going to work well, it's not going to be too cumbersome or too heavy or too slippery or too anything, you just want it to be a good overall knife, good EDC that can flex into the tactical philosophy of use. This is the knife right here, the Honey Badger. And again, not just this one in particular, any of the models, pick your poison, pick your blade shape, your color, your size, blade steel. Pick it. I'm sure they have something you'd like. For the money, it's just extremely, extremely exciting. This whole series of Honey Badgers is an absolute 11 out of 10 home run. Can't think of any obvious flaws these things have. That They're just fantastic user blades that really offer something for everybody. Man, woman, no matter what your age is, what blade shape you like, they probably got something for you. So, Manic's out.